Hey everybody, welcome to this video. We are going to be going a little bit deeper into this idea of downloading data from your views as PDFs or as uh, cross tabs like a CSV because this has been a topic that has been the most popular one in both the Medium blogs and the YouTube videos um, that I've published. So let's take a little deep dive here uh, there is another video that touched on how you could do something um, that's a little bit tricky, which is passing in these date values uh, for parameters in your views. So we're, we're just touching on that again here, but we're not going to really spend a lot of time talking about it. So if you really want to know more about the challenges that can appear when you're filtering on dates specifically, then do check out the video that's in the description. But so let's give a little lay of the land here. We are going to be playing around with this view. So this is a classic, uh, anyone who took a Tableau training ever, you probably know this, uh, this picture by heart, but we're just looking at some, uh, some Tableau uh, Superstore data and we have uh, data about orders, things like uh, category, subcategory, and sales and profit. So what we're seeing here is uh, how much volume of sales there was for each of these subcategories within these categories, uh, which also belong in certain regions. And uh, what we're going to see is how we can actually use Python and the Tableau REST API to filter these values and not only filter to one specific value, but filter to multiple values. So we'll actually say, I want to see furniture and technology and then we want to see uh, just two regions here, east and west. Uh, and then we're going to filter our start and end date to be a little bit different than what we see here. So let's go ahead and briefly touch on what's making this come together. So we are using the REST API. Uh, the library that we're going to be using in this demo is Tableau API lib. You could accomplish what we're doing here um, in a lot of different ways. You don't need to use this library, but if you built it from scratch, you would be spending a lot of time out here at the REST API reference, figuring out that this is an endpoint that exists, query view PDF, for example, if you want a PDF downloaded. And then you would also see, oh, I want to do some filters. What does that filtering process look like? We have uh, some example down here from Tableau. And then if you wanted to query your view data, you could also find out that that's possible. There's an endpoint for this. And then very similar to that querying the PDF, you have an endpoint that's almost identical, same type of filtering is in place, but, uh, but you just have a different, slightly different endpoint that you're hitting. Uh, so you could build all of this from scratch, or you might try to use Tableau Server Client or you could use a library like Tableau API lib. That's all up to you. And in this example, we are using Tableau API lib. Uh, just one more little bit of information about these filters. Um, you can make these filters on both fields. So that's like a calculated field. Uh, if we go out to a Tableau workbook, like these are fields right out here in the data pane, but you can also filter parameter values. So start date and end date in this example, these are actually parameter values. And the one thing to note here, the only reason why uh, even specifying parameter values in these queries is going to do anything is that we do have a calculated field that is saying, um, hey, if the order date is greater than or equal to the start date and that order date is less than or equal to the end date, we're going to output true. Then we can see that we've added a filter that says only include true values. So if you're following along with this demo and you're kind of uh, maybe beginner to medium level in Tableau, uh, this is a subject that you'll want to maybe invest a bit of time into is that relationship between calculated fields and parameters. But I just wanted to mention that because we are showing off, you know, how complex you can make these queries, which will help you get a lot done in the real world 
if you're working with clients and they want to do all this this crazy idea of hey tableau is a great interactive data visualization tool let me not interact with my data at all and just get a pdf or a download of the data uh, it sounds crazy but a lot of you if anybody's watching this video out there you might have landed here simply because someone wants to um, not use tableau uh, as a as an interactive tool but instead just get these pdf and data download dumps uh, it's a thing it's real so let's see how you can do it uh, really quickly also the rest api does give you some more information about how to um, about how to make these filters you don't need this uh, for this tutorial because the library is doing it for you, but I want to empower you to be able to do this stuff on your own if you wanted to so that you're not locked into this library uh, that I wrote because the whole reason I wrote this library was because I didn't want to be locked into something else that someone had built. Um, okay, so let's just see what you can do with this library and if you want to do it your own way, now you know that you can build it from scratch by hitting the Tableau REST API. So the uh, now moving into code, we're in a Jupyter notebook, and this is where we're going to be writing our Python code. Um, let's just blast through the basics here because we have other videos that cover this. We are going to be making use of URL lib. It's a kind of a standard library. Uh, it's going to help us clean our values that we pass into our parameters and filters. We'll see later on why you would want to do that. I recommend always cleaning your values. Uh, otherwise, you might send a, a filter uh, value to Tableau server and it doesn't recognize that. It doesn't, say, it doesn't know, uh, can't translate that value to something that exists in your workbook because you didn't um, prepare it properly. Uh, then we are importing just some basic stuff from Tableau API lib library. And this includes a Tableau server connection and some other things we'll touch on in a couple minutes. Uh, so let's see, you know, Tableau server connection, why do we need this? Well, we have to define our configuration details. Uh, you could pass in multiple configuration details if you wanted to. You could define many of these. You know, if you're like a consultant or something, you're trying to tap into multiple environments or you're a server administrator and you want to log into different sites by default, you could configure that. Um, and in this case, you just need to name each environment. We say whatever name you choose, and that's also the thing down here, whatever name you choose, that's the uh, environment we're gonna be connecting into. Uh, if you wanna know more about this, check out some of the other videos we have, like getting started with Tableau API Lib. There's also some Medium blogs out there. Uh, so knock yourself out if you want to know all the ins and outs of this. And yes, I am revealing my personal access token here. Um, and don't do that at home. Uh, it's not safe. So I'm going to delete this after the video. We are going to log in. So we establish a connection. And of course, I didn't run these cells up here. So you need to run your code before your code can work. Um, I have to run these import statements in order to use uh, the, the library. So now that I've done that, uh, we could sign in and we get this response that says we're signed in successfully. And uh, now we just have some kind of quality of life kind of steps here. So you don't need to do this stuff, but I figure in the real world, you always need to do this. So why don't we just go through the motions um, you are downloading data about a PDF. You're downloading either, or sorry, about a view. You're, you're either downloading a PDF version of the view or you're downloading data or you're downloading a PNG version of it in this example. So one thing that you absolutely need to know is what view am I getting data from? You have many views in your Tableau server, right? A view is a worksheet. So let's figure out which views we have in this environment. And here we're just seeing the top five, uh, but we can see we have a lot of these. None of these are the one I wanna use in this example. So let's just quickly see, or I say quickly, but let's, uh, let's just go down this rabbit hole a bit of, okay, you have a lot of views in your environment, uh, just like I have a lot of views in mine. How do you go about finding views that belong to a specific workbook or a specific project so you can kind of narrow down the scope of what you're looking at and find the, the view ID that you actually want to be querying? So here we're going to make use of a little function in the library called flatten dict column. Uh, why is it called flatten dict column? Well, all of these uh, all of these columns that we see out here when we query our views like project, owner, workbook, these have nested information in them. 
And those that nested information takes on a kind of JSON format, or uh, in the Python world, we would call that a dictionary, where you have keys and values. And um, the in order to actually get this information in a convenient format that we can query in a pandas data frame, which is what we're looking at here, we're going to want to flatten that information so it's no longer nested. So that's what we're doing here. And part of that flattening process involves us saying, hey, what's the data frame that, I, that I'm uh, taking some information from and flattening? Which keys, in other words, which columns um, am I kind of flattening? Well, I say columns here because these keys are going to be pivoted into columns in our new data frame. Uh, in this case, we want the name and the ID. So uh, if we're flattening the workbook column or the project column, that means that we're going to be extracting, like here we can see ID is, an, is a nested piece of information in this. So we're gonna be extracting that ID. There's also a name in here in the nested information. We're gonna be extracting that. And then column name is workbook. And by default, this flattened dict column is also going to uh, have a prefix. So by, by default, this is set to true, and that prefix is just going to take on the name of the column. So we should end up seeing at the end of the day, workbook name and workbook ID, whereas before, when we originally queried our view information, uh, we didn't know any of that. We just had this workbook object that was nested and not really convenient to work with. So long tangent here, I know, because you came here wanting to query your view data, but, uh, but this is some good stuff to know in order to be able to get to something like this, this data frame, where if we scroll over to the end, we can now see, oh, it's really easy for me to query workbooks by name. Maybe you know the name of a workbook that you published and you just want to access the views inside of it, uh, or you want to get all of your views for a specific project. Uh, now you have an idea of how you can do that. Uh, without this process, it's a little bit more complex. So there you go, nice little uh, way to, tap into that nested information that you'll often get back from Tableau's REST API. So here is how we would actually filter. Let's say we wanted to look at all of the views that belong to a specific project. If we look out here in the wild, I do have uh, in my environment a few projects and one of these projects is called tutorials. And so that's why over here in the code, you're going to see me filtering to see only views that belong to my tutorials project uh, now I, I run that code and if I scroll over, we can see that the only project names that we're getting here are uh, tutorials, which means I'm now only seeing views for that project. All right, so just like we did that for projects, let's also see how you could filter down to a specific workbook name. That, uh, that whole flattened dict column exercise we did gave us a new column called workbook name. And if we filter on that and we say, I want to see all my views for this workbook, then we will see that I only have one view within that workbook. Uh, this column called ID, this is the ID of my view. And so that's what I'm going to run with down here as the view that we will be working with. All right, so you know, five hours later or however long it took to run through um, that kind of, that rabbit hole of how you can get uh, some good information about your workbooks and your projects in order to uh, narrow down the scope of the views you're looking at. Now that we've covered that, we have our view ID and let's get to actually downloading PDFs and downloading data and then filtering this. So for starters, um, we're just gonna focus on these two endpoints. This is the, uh, the query view PDF endpoint and the query view data endpoint. And um, these names are not by accident. These are named the way they are because that's how they're called in the REST API reference. So that's what we're doing all the time over here in the Tableau API lib library. Uh, we, we want to just basically give a gateway into the Tableau REST API uh, as much as possible. So if, this is, if you see a name in the REST API reference, that name is, is going to be as much as possible uh, reflected in this library. So what do we do with this? Well, we already established our connection to our Tableau environment. So we're going to say, uh, I'm tapping into that environment and I'm going to query a view PDF. My view ID is going to be the thing I defined up here, which is the ID of the view that we care about. It's the, the one out here. This, uh, this beautiful 
Tableau training view. And um, then I'm actually going to delete this. We don't want any parameters right now. We wanna keep it simple. So let's just see what it looks like if we hit the endpoint just raw without trying to filter on anything. Let's get our view response. Let's also get the data response. Um, let's take a look and make sure that we get this response code of 200 for both of those. And uh, just a quick side note here that this response that's coming back to us, um, if we just look at the response itself, by default, it's like printing out the status code telling us, you know, 200 is successful. But what we really want in order to get to the results, like to get to the meat of that response, we're going to have to tap into the content of the response. So we can see here that the response comes back to us from the server in the form of bytes. That's important to know because at the end of the day, you don't just want this, uh, this response floating around and not doing anything. You want to, uh, over here in our file, area, we, we probably want this to end up being an actual PDF file or a CSV file. So that's exactly what we do down here. You know, Python's a lovely programming language. Uh, it's easy to output files and stuff like that. So we just say, we're going to make a file named this plain view PDF dot PDF. And then this little WB is specifying that we are writing. That's the W, write. And then the B is bytes. So we are writing bytes to a file. Uh, so now let's write that for both our PDF and our CSV. And let's, um, let's take a look at the PDF first. Okay, so you know maybe not the most gorgeous PDF you've ever seen, but we're not here uh, to make things look pretty today. We're just here to demonstrate how you can filter and download your, your view PDFs and your view data. So let's just say we're happy with this. It is a PDF, awesome. Uh, now let's look at the CSV and we can see, okay, I got all the summary data. And uh, also I'm gonna point out here that this is not the underlying data from the data source, right? This is the underlying data for the view. So uh, the data that we're getting in the CSV is just the, uh, the data at the granularity that you're seeing in your view. So it's something really good to know. If you need to download your raw data, like the underlying data in the data source, in this case, it would be like transactional level data. Uh, query view data is not gonna be you know, your ticket to success there. You're probably gonna be wanting to circumvent the uh, the front end of Tableau entirely and not hit the REST API, but instead hit the database itself. So just trying to save you some time there um, if you're going that route. All right, so we have filtered um, or filtered nothing at this point. We have downloaded a PDF and we've downloaded the CSV version of that PDF, um, but we haven't filtered anything up to this point. So let's get down here to this, uh, this filtering stuff and the first thing we're going to need to do is we're going to specify the names of the fields or the names of the parameters that we're filtering on. So let's just quickly verify, make sure I'm not a liar here and see that this is in fact what these names uh, are in the workbook. So if we scroll over to the workbook here, we can see category is the name of my field that represents my, my product categories. Region is the name of my region field. And then we have these parameter names that appear exactly as they appear out here in our code. Uh, now this URL lib.parse.quote, why am I sprinkling this in here all over the place? Um, this is something that's just a good idea to do because at the end of the day, we are sending a request to a server. And if we have things like spaces in our text for, for our values, you know, like the, the parameter name or the, uh, the field name or the values that we want to filter on, that's not going to translate well to a URL. Like, like look up here at this URL. This URL has no spaces in it. It's because a space would break that URL. You have to replace it with a character that's URL friendly. And uh, just off the top of my head, you know, a space turns into percent twenty when you convert that. Now you don't have to know all of this off the top of your head. Like I don't know what a pipe character is. I have no idea what that translates to. So instead of having to know all that stuff and become a URL um, encoding genius, just use the URL lib library. In this 
uh, URL, URL lib.parse.quote. You could uh, wrap that around any string and it's gonna convert it into something that's URL friendly. So we do that for all these values and the, the names of the things are one part of that puzzle, but then the values that we want to filter on is another piece of that puzzle that we need to stitch in place. So in this case, we want to limit our view to only consider uh, two categories, that's furniture and technology, uh, two regions, that's east and west, and then we're going to look at the first quarter of 2021. So uh, let's take a look out at the workbook and specify these things so that we can see what, what the results that we expect to see should look like. So let's go ahead and get rid of office supplies. So we're just looking at furniture and technology. And let's look at only the uh, east and west regions. And let's change this to be uh, January 1st of 2021. And um, let's change this to be March 31st, 2021. So now we're looking at Q1 of 2021. Um, we're looking at just furniture and technology. We are looking at East and West regions, and this is the visual we should end up getting. All right, so uh, with that said, I do wanna point out before we go back to the code that regardless of how your dates look, in this case we have uh, month slash day slash year. Forget about that format. Whenever you're passing in a value for a date, like for a parameter or for a calculated field, uh, Tableau is going to reformat that in the way it stores it in the workbook. And long story short, you know, we have another video about that uh, if you want to check it out. It's a video about how to query your date parameters. Well, what you're gonna to wanna to do is just translate the, that date format into year-month-day format um, because that is what Tableau is gonna recognize. If you were to pass this data in any other format for the parameter value here, Tableau is just not gonna register it and you're basically just gonna end up not filtering on that thing. So if you mess up your filters here, you know, like let's say you mess up your name and you pass in something that uh, Tableau doesn't recognize and can't translate to a value that exists in your workbook, um, then it's basically just gonna ignore that filter. All right, so we've got our values that we wanna filter on and let's make sure we run through this all so that um, everything actually works. And then down here, we are going to define a dictionary where ultimately the keys don't matter. Um, the way that this is set up is that you just have some keys that help you keep track of what it is that you're uh, that you're defining. Like I know I want a category filter, but what is it? Well, over here, I follow the Tableau server REST API format for defining a filter, where we always have this, uh, this VF underscore and then whatever it is that you're filtering on uh, kind of thing. And again, because we're using a library, we don't have to worry about this. Like in this case, when you want to filter on multiple things, you have to put an ampersand there and then say, you know, here's my other filter. Um, we'll forget about that because we're using the library. So all we have to do is define all these different filters that we want. And then the Tableau API lib library is going to stitch these together for us. Um, but we do need to just specify that VF underscore whatever the thing's name is and then whatever the values are that we wanna pass. Uh, and notice up here how when we said we wanted to filter on furniture and technology and the, the regions east and west, we just separated the values that we wanted with a comma. All right, if you only wanted to filter on one of these, you would just delete that and you just have a single value. All right, so let's see if this thing works the way that we expect it to. We have our custom URL params defined in this dictionary. So uh, let's take a quick look at how the URL parse, um, URL lib.parse.quote modified our values. And we can see down here that like this name um, for, uh, for our parameter, like start param start date, turned into this weird thing like percent %20, that's a space, percent %7C, that's a, I guess a pipe character. And so something that was like this turned into something that looks like this. And that's good because that's what the server needs. Uh, if we were passing in spaces and pipe characters, then everything would break, wouldn't really work for us. Uh, so that's good. Um, now let's 
go ahead and do the exact same thing we did before, like when we didn't want to filter on anything, we just ran this uh, this little query that hit this endpoint, query view PDF, query view data, and now we're introducing this new thing that we can pass in whenever we hit this endpoint, and that's this object uh, or this, uh, this parameter called parameter dict, and that's going to just be these values that we define for all our filters. Uh, what this thing does is it takes whatever you pass into parameter dict, it takes all those different values here and it appends those to your URL um, that the that basically acts as the endpoint that we're hitting. So let's run this and let's see when we output these files what our outputs are looking like. Compare that to our uh, Tableau workbook and see if everything's kind of as we expected it to be. So when we look at the CSV, first of all, we can see that we're only getting furniture and technology, uh, whereas previously we had office supplies in the mix. So it seems like that's working. And uh, for the rest, I guess we'll just have to compare the visuals. So let's go ahead and crack open the filtered view PDF and we can see something that looks like this. And then if we go out to the workbook, we can see, yeah, all those proportions um, look right. Okay, so that worked, it looks like, and uh, we can just compare that against what the plain PDF looked like. There you go. Um, so that's where we're gonna wrap things up today. We just took a, a nice deep dive down into how you can, uh, first of all, even download a PDF and download a crosstab of the, uh, the summary data that's driving a Tableau visual. And then we dove into how you could do these filters. Um, they're a little bit more complex than just surface level filters because we are specifying multiple values for these filters. And we're also not only filtering on fields, but filtering on parameters and handling the scrubbing of the text that, that may exist in both the names of the fields and the parameters, but also the values. Uh, and keep in mind, once again, for your dates, you always wanna use that year dash month dash day format. So I hope this video has been helpful to you and uh, let's dive into some more Tableau REST API tutorials in the future.